Hello, my dear friends. My name is Antonio Ramacher, and today you study English with me because it is the English day, Monday. So today we're going to talk about conditional sentences. We have talked about them a couple of times already. And uh, as long as you do not remember some basic information about conditional sentences, well, I strongly recommend to watch my first videos connected to conditional sentences and only after that you can move on to this class. So uh, the topic we're going to talk about today is quite advanced. So we're going to talk about inversion in conditional sentences. So this class won't be long because the topic is quite logical and understandable and here our job is just to remember. So, the thing I want to talk about today is that in conditional sentences we can use inversion, but not in all cases. So, if in the if clause the first verb which you see is should, were or had, then you can apply inversion. In this case you can leave out the word if and put this verb, I mean should, were or had, at the beginning of the sentence. So, thus you will see the inversion. So, once again, let's repeat the rule. Uh, if the first verb in a conditional if clause is should, were or had, we can leave out if and put the verb at the beginning of the sentence. Here, I need to point out that this kind of a change in version takes place in literary English or in formal English. So, it's not colloquial, it's quite formal, you can use it in writing, why not? And you will so sound quite smart. Now, let's take a look at an example to understand this construction better. We can say should you be in any kind of trouble, give me a call. I'll help you out. As you can see, we say should you be. Of course, here we can say if you should be in any kind of trouble, give me a call. But as long as the first verb in the if clause is should, if you should be, then we can uh, use the inversion here and we have should you be in any kind of trouble. The second example. Were she to find out about it, she would freak out. Once again, here we can write the sentence in a regular way. We can say, if she were to find out about it, she would freak out. For example, that her boyfriend cheated on her. So, if she were to find out about it, she would freak out. And of course, it will be very logical. So, here, were, yeah, and it is the first verb which you see in the if clause. If she were to find out, that's why we can use inversion here. It can be used. And the third example. Had I not studied very hard at school, I wouldn't have entered the university. Here, of course, when you use had, usually you deal with the past, with some kind of a condition in the past, with an unreal situation in the past. Once again, had I not studied very hard at school, I wouldn't have entered the university. So, once again, the verbs we need to focus on here are should, were and had. So, be careful about them. Make your speech more advanced, make your writing more advanced, use it in different essays and compositions and letters and emails. Why not? It would make you, uh, well, sound very advanced. Anyway, once again, do not forget that this is formal English or literally, uh, literary English, sorry, and it's inversion, it's possible. So, I hope that now you won't have any problems with such kind of sentences, with such kind of inverted sentences, and you will use them sometimes in your speech and writing. But that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to press the button, like the video, give me your heart, 
Also, watch my other videos because on this channel I have a lot of videos devoted in e to English and you are going to improve your grammar and vocabulary if you take a look at them. And keep following me, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hope to see you soon. Happy English and Russian practice! Bye-bye! I need to point out that uh, this kind of an inversion usually happens in formal English. So it's quite formal, literally, uh, literary English. Not literally, sorry. Here. Yeah.